She's been called the first lady of the ballet and the greatest ballerina of her time. She is Alicia Alonso, the prima ballerina from Cuba who runs one of the world's leading ballet companies, the National Ballet de Cuba. Confined to bed repeatedly early in her career due to eye problems, Miss Alonso says she learned to dance with her hands, her head, and her heart. She is still using those skills today as her company presents three new works in late October at the International Ballet Festival in Cuba. Michael Voss sat down with Havana's Grand Dame of Dance to discuss her extraordinary career earlier this year. You trained in New York for decades. There was a strong Russian influence here in Cuba. And this is Cuba. It has an Afro and a Spanish roots. Is there something unique? Is there something special about dancers here? It's very warm, the way we dance. Very, the main dance, very masculine with the woman that is very feminine. It's, it's, a, it's a contrast of male and, and female dancing. And that, all of that, it goes right into the audience very well. They enjoy it because they are artists, not just mechanic dancers, they are artists. Your debut was on Broadway in Variety. It wasn't classical ballet. And we got into Broadway dancing because there was nothing else to do in New York. There was no ballet company, professional ballet company. Till Biofield came, and we were a group of dancers, of people who wanted to dance ballet, a strictly ballet dancers. So that's when Biofield came, and it started to make a company of ballet. And all of us got inside that company. That company was the Ballet Theatre, later renamed the American Ballet Theatre. In 1943, Alonso was asked to dance Giselle because the prima ballerina was ill. The critics loved it. The rest, they say, is history. She was best known for her lively, precise Giselle and her sensual, tragic Carmen. Yet from very early on, Alonso suffered a series of detached retinas and lost most of her eyesight. It never stopped her dancing, though. I dominate such a technique after that I, I need just a very strong light put it in different places. And I could, with that light, I manage the stage. And with a very good partner that I work all the art and say, uh, Watch it, I'm going to do this diagonal, and, and there I will do the pirouette, and I will do it. it and he will be ready and catch me. You must have really trusted your male dark partners on this. Yes, I did. I had a very good partner. I got for 10 years a partner, Igor Yuskevich, one of the best dancers in the world. She went on to become an international superstar, one of the most sought-after prima ballerinas of her day. In the 1950s, Harper's and Queen voted her one of the most beautiful women in the world. But even at the height of her fame, Alicia's heart remained in Cuba, and she was determined to bring classical ballet to the island of her birth. In 1948, between engagements, she founded the Alicia Alonso Ballet Company, which would eventually become the Cuban National Ballet. Every time I had a vacation, I flew to Cuba and taught in the school here that we have to teach them. I teach them, I dance for them all the time. And that's the way we, we build up the company. Las tropas. Despite her wealthy background, Alicia Alonso was a firm supporter of the Cuban Revolution and wrote to Fidel Castro while he was still a guerrilla leader in the Sierra Maestra mountain. When he was in the, in the front, in the air, we sent him a, 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 a big paper list for all the reasons that we think why a company should be done in Cuba. Uh, and, and the school, a big professional school, that they needed all that. It worked. Alicia returned permanently to Cuba after the revolution and would take her dancers out into the sugar plantations and factories to show ordinary Cubans what ballet was all about. 
Fidel was so impressed that he promised to subsidize the company.